Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm an associate teaching professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students. I hope you're having a great day. It's a warm late winter, early spring day here in Chicago. Everybody's getting ready for spring. I hope the weather's great where you're at. All right, today we're going to look at stable diffusion with control net and specifically at Canny, which is going to allow us to take an image like this from Rhino and turn it into an image like that in stable diffusion. All right, before we jump into it, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Click on subscribe, click on the down arrow, and choose all to receive all the notifications. Help me get to 14,000 subscribers. That will be a great milestone. If you are into digital design, if you're an architecture student, interior architecture student, there is something here for you. All right, also connect with me on Instagram at my first name, Alfonso underscore my last name, Peluso. I've been putting out a lot of new content, a lot of top five content, and I've been getting some really great responses to it. So come check it out. Help me get to 8,000 followers. All right. Let's jump into today's tutorial. So stable diffusion, canny. All right. So we, I'm in stable diffusion right now. Here you see the stable diffusion web interface, but we're actually going to start out in Rhino. So this is a just a very simple massing model in Rhino. So the idea now is to use generative AI to create visualizations of our project for us. And with Midjourney, we were really limited because we couldn't input actual geometry. And this is actual geometry that's made in Rhino. So if you're modeling your project in Rhino, this is a way that you can make a nice visualization in it in Stable Diffusion using Control Net. Okay, so I'm just going to output this image. So I'm just going to use View Capture to File. And I'm going to set my resolution. In this case, I'm going to set it to be square. It may differ based on the image that you're working on. I'm going to set this one to be square. And I'm going to go ahead and export that out. I'm going to export it out as a PNG file. And I'm going to put it in the right folder here. Okay, so I'm just going to call this tower view dash one. Okay, so now I have my file and I'm just going to open that up in Photoshop just so we can get a better look at it. So here's the image in Photoshop. So if we go to main menu image, image size, we're going to see that it's 1600 by 1600. Okay, so in Stable Diffusion, we're going to be bringing that into Control Net. So we're looking at our Stable Diffusion interface here, but if we scroll down, we're going to find Control Net. And I can click on the little side arrow, and that will expand the Control Net. So I'm going to drop my image into here. And... I'm going to enable it. I'm going to click on P Pixel Perfect, and we'll talk about that in a second. And I'm going to click on Allow Preview. And then under Control Type, there's a whole bunch of control types that we can look at. In this video, we're going to look at Canny. I'm going to click on Canny, and it changes the preprocessor to Canny and the model processor to Canny as well. And I want to see a preview of this Canny canny image that is generated. And to do that, I'm going to click on this little explosion button. And that's going to give me my canny image. And you see that it inverts it, and it makes it black with white lines. Okay, so we're just going to try and get an image based on what we've created here. And my checkpoint model right now is just a version 1.5, so Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint model. And I'm going to go ahead and enter in a prompt. I'm going to copy and paste uh, from one that I already have. So something really simple in this case. 
and that's going to be an eye-level view of a skyscraper in the parametric style located in Chicago. Skyscraper is made of glass and steel. And I'm going to go ahead and just click on Generate. So you see we get a very basic image, nothing super spectacular yet. So this is what we're getting with the Stable Diffusion 1.5 model. And that's just a default model. I'm going to go ahead and use Architecture Real Mix. So this is a model that you can download from Civit AI. You can go to Civit AI and search for Architectural Real Mix. And you can download the Safe Tensor Checkpoint model. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to that model. And we'll go ahead and click on Generate. So not too bad for a starting point. So here's our starting point model, or our starting point image, I should say. And what we're typically doing with this generative AI is we're creating many, many images, and we're changing our prompt based on the feedback that we get from the image. So if you're used to working in mid-journey, you'll know that it produces four images at a time. So here in Stable Diffusion and Control Net, I can increase my batch count. And this is, this is just part of Stable Diffusion. You can always do this in Stable, Diffu Stable Diffusion, whether you're using Control Net or not. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the batch count to four. And I'm going to click on Generate. And that's going to go ahead and generate four images for me instead of just the one. And at the bottom, I can go ahead and click on these. I can click on the image to see them larger. And I'm getting some, some fairly nice images here. I wish this one wasn't in the water. <laughs> it's kind of cool in the water, but I wish it wasn't because I would, I would reuse that um, seed. And speaking of reusing the seed, yeah, let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. So we're going to get the seed from this image. So I'm going to click on the X down here. And in my image here, I'm going to have a seed, or in my image description, I should say. I'm going to have a seed. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I'm going to paste that into the seed. So it's going to continue to use that seed. That seed is used to generate this image. Now we can start to change the prompt or add to the prompt and keep using the same seed so we get the same feel and What's nice about this is all that's going to change in the image is based on what we add to the prompt. So what we add to the prompt, we should be able to say, is that a good thing or a bad thing based on how the image changes? So I'm going to add to this park in foreground and see if that gives me a park in the foreground. And I'm just going to click Generate. And I'm going to go ahead and look through these. So still not getting a park in the foreground. So let's continue adding to our prompt to see if we can get this uh, image to be generated the way that we want it. Okay, so skyscraper is made of glass and steel. Park in foreground. Lots of trees. skyscraper situated in downtown downtown Chicago in between buildings and let's just get skyscraper spelled correctly here and let's see what this does for us Okay, let's take a look. All right, so it's understanding most, most of our prompt. We're just not getting the 
park in the foreground. So we have to just keep generating images until we get what we want and changing the prompt. So let's start adding to our prompt. So there's some things we can add to it. We can put in negative values. So I can put in uh, water. So these are all no values. I don't have to put in no water, but it's, it's, I'm just going to put in water for the negative, so it's not going to put in water. And to accentuate my park in foreground, I'm going to put park in the foreground. I'm going to put lush, lush trees in park. in the foreground and see if we get something that we like. Oh, it looks like we got one. <laughs> looks like we got, we're getting a lot of trees. Uh, this one is kind of interesting with the park. It, I like the way how it's divided the park up and made kind of separate spaces there. I really like that one. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and 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 use this image. So where is it putting these images? Um so that's something we can look at. So I can you know I can click on that image and then I can right click on it and I can just do a save as and then I can go ahead and save that particular image. So I'm going to call this skyscraper or I'm going to go back to tower. We, we were using the word tower before, so we'll use tower. Tower in park. And I'm going to call this 512. So what is 512? 512 is the pixel count or the resolution. So if we go back over to Stable Diffusion, we'll see that it's creating our images at 512 by 512. Well, I want to look at increasing the resolution of these images. So we're going to go over to Extras, and we're going to drop our image into here, the image that we just saved. So that was Tower and Park 512. And we're going to resample it to be four times as big. So I think that's going to be 4K for us. You can do it at two times as big to be 2K, but you have to change the upscaler. So I'm going to set the upscaler to SGAN four times. So SRGAN four times. <laughs> Funny to say that, SRGAN four times. And to get a better understanding of what that is, I'm going to put a link to this blog article. I'll put that in the description, and that talks about the different upscalers that you can use. And you can see that the RSGAN is, uh, is a pretty good one to use. Okay, so that's, you see we have a whole bunch of these to choose from. All right, so we'll go with that one. I'm going to choose the RSGAN four time. Okay, I had the SGAN, but I really want the RSGAN, which is detailed in this blog article. All right, so all you have to do then is just click Generate. So that takes a little time. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And we see the resolution is a lot cleaner than the 512. And we can compare these if I do a save as. And I'll save this as tower in the park. And this one is going to be uh, not, not 512, but I think it's, I'm just going to guess at it. I'm just going to put 4K. That makes sense. We'll put 4K in there. And in Photoshop, we'll open both of those up. Okay, so this, I'm going to zoom this to full size. This is the 512, and this is the 4K. So 512, 4K. So you can really see how that upscale uh, really works out and gives us a nice resolution. Okay, the last thing that I want to look at with Canny, and it's not necessarily Canny, it's more of a stable diffusion thing, that if you have images that you've created in Stable Diffusion, they're going to have information embedded in them. 
So if I go over to PNG info, info and Stable Diffusion, I can drop an image in here. I'll drop in our 4K image. And it gives us the prompt, the negative prompt, and all the settings. And what's really great here is you can always get the seed so that you can continue. You can come back a day, a week, a month from now, and you can can continue working with this file because you have the seed. As long as you keep all the settings the same that are described in here and use that seed, you're going to get the exact same image in Stable Diffusion. All right. That's all I wanted to cover. If you want to know a little bit more about Stable Diffusion, be sure to keep checking out my channel. I'm going to make more videos on Stable Diffusion and Canny. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a like. Also, leave me a comment. Tell me why you like the video. My head's going to pop up in the upper left. Go ahead and click on it if you haven't subscribed. I'm going to put two videos in the upper right and the lower right. All right. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.